Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Algebra 1, Chapter 10, Section 2 in this book. Last time we talked about subtracting polynomials and adding them, and now we're going to multiply, of course. <clears throat> Remember, a polynomial is something like this that has things you can't add or subtract because to add or subtract, they have to have the same letters with the same exponents. <clears throat> because this one doesn't have a squared and that one doesn't have an x squared. You can't add them up. That's all you got. These are called the terms and um, the, this is the, the numbers are called the coefficients and the exponents are called, the leading exponent is called the degree and the, that's called the leading coefficient. It's a little special. You'll find out later why. All right. So how do you multiply? Well, you actually know how to do this already because you've already learned the distributive property. So here I'm multiplying these two things together. And what, but I have to use the distributive property and I have to do one term and then the other one. So what I do every single time is draw arrows to remind me what to do. Because if I miss a problem, it's not because I didn't understand it, it's because I got disorganized with it and left something behind. So the arrows help me know not to leave a term behind, okay? So what you do first is you draw your arrow from x to x, and then x, the first term to the next one. And I draw the arrows from the first term back on top, and then you have to remember to do the second term. So I arrow from 2 to x and, and 2 to negative 3, and I draw those on bottom. Now, there's a little thing that helps you remember this if you don't remember the distributive property, and it's called FOIL. It makes a word like, you know, aluminum foil. And so you do your first terms, see they're both first, then you do the outside ones, then you do the inside ones, and then you do the last ones, like that. Now, uh, I always thought it kind of looked like a smiley face a little bit, so it made me happy. Okay. So this, so now we're going to do it. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is 6. Now, you can't add and subtract everything, but you can add and subtract these middle ones. So here, what do we need to do? Gather up our terms, two on each side. Okay, so we're going to do gather this and this. Negative 3x plus 2x is negative x. So this is the answer. x squared minus x, coming from those, and minus 6. Okay, let's do another one. So first, I draw my arrows. I don't always draw arrowheads. I at least draw the lines. Okay, 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 5 is 15x. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 5 is 20. These can be gathered up, so it's 3x squared. 15 plus 4 is 19x plus 20. That's a little hard to read. Let's switch to a different color. We'll go back to black. Back in black. All right, so let's do it again. Draw the arrows, or at least lines. Sometimes my arrowheads, I get too sloppy and they look like negatives, so I have to watch out for that. Okay, so 3x times 2x is 6, oh, I need to give myself room to gather terms. Hold on, whoop, 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 more film with sound effects. 6x squared, okay? 3x times 1 is plus 3x. Negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. We gather these two up. Doop, doop, doop. Sing the song. 6x squared. Uh, eight, negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x minus 4. Ta -da! Okay. Now what about this one? Your book shows you how to do this um, vertically. No. We're just going to do the distributive property and draw our arrows and we're going to be fine, okay? So our arrows go here, here, and here, and there, there, and there. All right? So now let's do it. x times 5 is 5x. x 
times 3x is plus 3x squared, because I have two x's. x times negative x squared is negative x cubed, because I have three of them. Now we're going to do the bottom. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. And negative 2 times x squared is positive, because two negatives make a positive, 2x squared. Now we gather up our terms. We're, our biggest one is this one. So we start with negative x cubed, and it's the only one. Mark it out. Then come the squareds, and we have positive 3x squared plus 2x squared is 5x squared. Now we do the x's. 5x minus 6x is negative x. And now the bare number, minus 10. Ta-da! Okay, the next one in your book, they have it written like this with the 3 in front and the 2 behind. I can't do that. So step one for me is to write the smaller one first because i got to have my arrows going that way. Organization is everything here. Okay, so step one, rewrite it. Step two, I'm drawing my arrows. Okay, now I'm going to do it. 2x uh, times 4x squared is 8x cubed. 2x times negative 3x is negative 6x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Now I can do the bottom. Negative 5 times 4x squared is negative 20x squared. Negative 5 times negative 3x is positive 15x, and negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. Almost ran out of room there. Now we got to gather up. I only have one cubed, and it's that one. 8x cubed, mark it out. Squared, I've got a negative 6x. I've got a negative 20x squared. So this is negative 26x squared, mark them out. X's, I have a negative 2x and a positive 15x. So that's plus 13x, mark them out, and my final thing is a 5. Ta-da! Okay, this is a classic Algebra 1 problem that is stupid. Nobody does this, but they love this. So what it is, is we have a window, and we want to get this area, and remember area is length times width by tradition written in cursive, and they said this side is 2x. The little going this way is 3 on each side. This side is 3x, and this little bit is 5 on each side. In reality, you get a ruler, you measure the window. This is why kids get frustrated with algebra. It's because of these crazy problems that nobody does in real life. Okay, so what you do, though, is you just say you got 3x plus 2 fives is plus 10, and on this side it's 2x plus 2 threes is 6. Then you multiply them together. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 10 is plus 20x. 6 times 3x is 18x. 6 times 10 is 60. You gather up these terms, and there's the answer. Nobody does this. And then they say, well, if x is 10, what is it? You substitute 10 in for x, and you'd get 1040. Look at it in your book. Make sure it makes sense. They'll put this test on the SAT, the ACT, and your college entrance exams. But I really don't like that problem. Okay, but maybe you will. I don't want to spoil you, for, you know, with my negative attitude. All right? Math is great. See you next time.